Harrison Jr. I am an artist out of Charlotte, North Carolina. I uh, travel a whole bunch of places and get to do a lot of stuff that I love. What, that's what pretty much Charlotte? Charlotte. What, what I was born and raised here, born man. Born and raised. One I, of few. Yeah, I'm, one of the Because uh, most of my, my experience with like art kind of is like my experience with music in the way that most of the people who had something that was awesome, like back in the day, would pick up their stuff and go somewhere else after a while because they were frustrated. So like, you know, in my late teens, early 20s, man, I would see like all these different like rap acts and stuff and they would perform in Charlotte and I was young and I was like fresh out of high school. I was probably like early, early college, like freshman, you know? Like I was like a super duper freshman. I think it was like a freshman twice. It was like, this, this, this was a different time period. Like, you know, like Sega Dreamcast was really big, you know? so. I remember like I wasn't really focused so much in my studies so much as I was more focused in going to there used to be a place called Microplay. There was like a video game store in Charlotte off of Central Avenue. Like a little hole in the wall. You get like Japanese bootlegs and stuff and like video games, like foreign video games and stuff. Man. Right, right. That was that was life. That's what I thought growing up life was like. That and like getting like the generic five like bootlegs or whatever. That was <laughs> that was my big thing. So um but yeah, like we uh we would go and see these people perform. And we love them, and either they break up, or they move to somewhere else. Right. My whole thing was uh, Prince, the, the, the musician Prince, you know? Yeah. Saying, like saying, like, the reason I like Prince so much is because, like, regardless of wherever he went, like, he was always stationed in Minneapolis. There's right. nothing in Minneapolis. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm not there's, saying there's, there's an airport. There's an airport. That's the only reason I've Kirby Puckett is there in Minneapolis. Right. Um, and I think that might be it. But because Prince was most comfortable there, like that's where he stayed. Now that was like you know, he can do a million feats like overseas somewhere else or wherever. But like as long as you bring it back home and make like your home credible, that's that's the whole thing altogether. So like it's not that I did anything great at all as far as like art stuff went. It was more that like I did. I just worked. I was consistent. I didn't go anywhere. Like and whenever I did things, like I always wanted to bring it back to Charlotte first. So like. The secret to whatever kind of piece of success I have, like, was more me going elsewhere and keeping it in Charlotte and trying to bring something to Charlotte that wasn't there from before. Trying to make right, such right. an impression that whenever I left, like, you'd feel that I was going. Sure. Trying to anyway, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, you think about it, like, as far as, like, artists go in Charlotte, I can only think of really, like, two or three. No, okay. No particular order. Will Puckett, Sharon Dowd, um, Gee Wynn. And Bearden, Romare Bearden, like who's like the guy that does like, like all the collage stuff, you know, but he's long dead now. He's been dead for almost 20, 25 years. So, you know, and especially as far as like there being like, um, not to get into it, but as far as it being like an African-American presence, like there's not like a whole lot of that here. I feel like there are young kids like coming up and doing their thing, but like as far as like me, I've been here for a while. I'm just trying to get established, you know? When I was in college, like me and my buddy, uh, I had a buddy Antoine, who's an artist out of my buddy Antoine, uh, we would uh we went to college together. Whenever we graduated, we saw we saw a lot of different artists in this magazine, this magazine called Juxtapose, and we would see like all these shows that just looked incredible. And it was like, okay, like um Oh man, did you see this show? Did you see the I Am 8 bit show? Did you see that the Beastie Boys theme show? Did you see like any of this other stuff? Like, uh, yeah, it's just too bad that it's not in Charlotte and that it's like out in California. Now, 8-Bit stuff like, like Chip Rock and stuff like that? Well, there was a, there was a, a show, a whole art show called I Am 8-Bit. It was like about 8-Bit uh, video games. Oh, right. And it was like, you know, Dig Dug, Mario, like all the other kind of stuff. And we would see that stuff and it would be like, okay, that's really cool. Like, why isn't there any of that stuff here, you know? Sure. And it's like, you know, why, why do we have to go somewhere else in order to see the art that we want to see? Why can't we just make the artwork that we want to see here. Like nobody knows about what's going on elsewhere. We're the only people that really read this magazine, really. So to everybody else, like they don't see, or they don't know what else, what's going on elsewhere. Let's, let's, let's do something cool here. Let's make what we want to make here. Just because I don't see that that much. I feel like it's kind of a dead genre, or it's a dying genre, fantasy art. My whole style of art, I guess, would more or less be somewhere along the lines of
sampling. Okay. Like how a DJ would sample a record. It would be like a beat and just kind of go Exactly. With that. And you're something completely different with it. Right. That's, that's really, in essence, like what most artists is, is what most artists do. Is there a time period you like to work in? Like, uh, like long ago, far in the future? What do you mean? Well, just, just kind of like, uh, like we've got like a dinosaur here and you know, maybe... Uh, what? I like to match it all up, to be honest with you. Like, I, I, I like it too. Artistically, like, it's almost like like when a kid has like a whole bunch of toys like that don't necessarily belong in any one particular place. But, but they can. Right, but, but because the kid's playing with them, like everything sort of jives together in the universe. So like, for example, it'll be like, um, you know, when you were a kid, you had like some Transformers toys, and you had like some dinosaur yeah. toys, some G.I. Joe's, you gotta make them like do battles together. And then you got, you know, He-Man coming over here out of left field, you know? That's, that's, that's what I do. A lot of times, like, I just can't sit at home. Like, right, anymore. right. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm the same way. Sometimes I just set up it, like, just for I the can't, laptop with a coffee shop. Man. Man. Right, it's just better to be away from the same oh. places all the time, working on the exact same thing. Hey, guys, how are y'all doing? What's going on? Hey. How are you? So, that's why I just, uh, I have a harder time. Sitting at home doing absolutely nothing. Yeah. I'm a busy body. <laughs> What's going on, fellas? How y'all doing? Hey, good, good. All right. When I was young, I had a girlfriend. And, you know, she was more involved in that corporate aspect of life you know like she was creative but it was a very safe creative it wasn't like anything where yes safe is a word i hear a lot with that yeah. just... like it's like you know like so you know you're cool with design you're cool with fashion but like you know as far as me running that risk to go ahead and be able to do what it is i love you're kind of skittish about it because you don't know that life my parents were the exact same way until i started doing more with it right like now it's like you know my mother is totally into what i do now because you know she's seen some of the stuff that I've, you know, actually been a part of and some of the stuff that I've worked on. But, um, you know, for a while it wasn't like that. But she, uh, she didn't understand it, you know, so she, she didn't understand it and, you know, she, and rightly, rightly so, I mean, she's like three and a half years older than me, you know what I'm saying, she didn't really, It wasn't like her lane, you know. Maybe she had dated guys, like done like a little bit of stuff here and there, and it's like I knew that I was going to do more than just do some cubicle stuff. I just didn't know what it was. I've never, I've never been above like, or thought that I was above like working a nine to five in order to support what I wanted to do. Sure. So um, I just work with the intention that, or with with the idea that hopefully one day. I won't have to work as hard for someone else as I do for myself. Does that make sense? And it's getting to the point now where it's like I don't necessarily work for a lot of people. I work with a lot of people. So like be it like a company, be it whomever, that's what I do now. Um, so that's pretty fortunate in that way. You know what I mean? Because I don't just, uh, I just always wanted to stay at it because I always felt like, you know, I wouldn't have been given this whole skill set if I wasn't meant to do more with it. Right. Usually a lot of times like I'll be working on so much stuff that isn't my own. Right. Like for someone else, like I hardly ever worry about that so much anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like it's more of a thing where I'm more uh, I'm more uh, by the time I finally get around to something like that I actually want to do and it's like okay let's go ahead and let my imagination run while I go ahead and do whatever else. Right. So I'm not really uh, so preoccupied with like what happens if, you know what I mean? Like there's always something and that's what I keep my sketchbook for also is like I just like in case there's something I want to work with mm 
-hmm. I usually tend to keep uh, I keep uh, a journal of different ideas and I also keep a lot of different characters in circulation so like whereas like I might not paint like one kind of thing for long it's always kind of easy to shut my brain off and go ahead and do I don't know like something with like I said character like it's like how whenever Muscle like a, memory sort of yeah, it's like a like a like a like a how a writer huh? may uh, write for a whole bunch of different books, but like you know, perfect example. There's a guy I know in Charlotte that writes for the X Men comic book. His name is Jason. Jason Latour. His name is, and he uh, he writes for that book, but then he writes like another book like uh, called Southern Bastards or something. Then he writes like something else somewhere else. So it's always like there's something going in circulation. So if you can't figure out one thing to do with one character or one particular series of paintings, there's always like something else to do somewhere Change else. Change that frame of reference and exactly. then get back to it. Exactly. So it's like you're taking a break from that one thing. That was always, uh, like when I was young and hip, like that was the spot that I wanted to, to you know, do artwork at because I could go ahead and get shoes also because I was. You know, I just spend a lot of money for other people to see. You know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, man, look at my shoes. How cool my shoes are, man. I spent this much on them. I'm cooler than you. It wasn't for girls. It was for guys. You know what I'm saying? And the guys were like, oh, man, you're not going to be cooler than me. I got to go with some more shoes. And that's how we just we stimulated the economy that way. That's yeah, what we yeah. did. Yeah. We did that. What you think that we did? Like, oh, man, I got to go find some more hard-to-find shoes now for some other dude to see. So we'd be like, oh, man, I got to find some other hard shoes to find. Hard you know what I mean? That, that's just a pissing contest. Oh, yeah. But yes, to answer your question, this is where I used to paint like a lot.